Kaligo lang natin guys. Kaya, ano na lang, pasensya na lang kung medyo masyadong press kong dating. <laughs> okay, okay. Whew, let's go. This is it. This is it. Pansit. Okay. Ako, daming budol na pag-usapan ngayon. Budol. <laughs> budol time! Yan, no? Budol time. This is it. <laughs> may alam. May alam kong bagong pagpasok sa ano. Sa... May bago akong natutunan na opening. Try natin to, ah. Okay, okay. Ganyan nga rin natin. Ang good. Ayan. Ganyan <laughs> natin yung pag-live ng isa. Hi, guys! <laughs> Hi, guys! Gusto ko lang magpasalamat uh, sa inyong suporta uh, sa ating opisina. <laughs> Ayan naman tayo. Baka may magalit na naman sa atin, ha? Lagi tayo ng music sa background. Din, din, din. Tapos ganon. Ready, ready akong ganon. Eyes hair. Ano? Ganon. Tapos, Hi, guys! Hi! <laughs> oh, alam niyo na yung konteksto ng pinag-usapan natin, guys. Oh, alam niyo na yan. Guys, gusto ko lang ipakita yung kitchen namin dito, ah. Oh. Hindi naman Louis Vuitton, pero... <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Oh, tama na yan, tama na yan. Tama na yan. Pag-usapan na lang natin yung tatay. Soon ha, guys. Ito na. Ito na. Budol King. Ito na talaga. The best talaga ito, guys. Pag-usapan natin ito. Saan na kayo? Magpakita na kayo. <laughs> Hintay ko kayo. Wrong niya. Hindi, alam ko. Confuse kayo kasi pa iba ibang oras natin. Hindi, as much as possible, guys. Tinitry ko na hindi sabayan yung mga, mga lodis natin dyan. Alam ko, mga 8.30 to 9, mga ganyan. So, either after na lang, pag tinapos ko ibang trabaho natin, or just before. Sorry, guys. Kaka-gym lang natin pang labas ng ating jet lag. Kaya, medyo ganyan ang dating natin. Alright? Pero, let's go. Let's go. Let's do this. Okay, guys. So, eto, may update na tayo. Lorraine Badoy. Eto, guys. Ha, yung mga minamahal na mga kadidias natin nung panahon na yan. Hindi ko alam ngayon. Kasi, mga kadidias natin na kaibigan, medyo timing na kay Kibuloy. Pero ayon kay ex-human rights lawyer Harry R. Ito ay isang bayani, guys. Ito isang bayani. Ito ang isa sa mga tao na lumalaban para sa ating demokrasya. Yan. Yan, guys. Ito na. Guilty na po of indirect contempt over retagging of Manila judge. Oh, guys. Alam niyo na yung context na yan, di ba? Pinag-usapan natin dati yan. Ito yung konteksto kung saan yung dating NTF, LCAC, uh, ek-ek na yan. <laughs> Parang ek-ek na lang tawag na, yung ek-ek na ano nila, ay nag, uh, ayan na, inakusa yung isang court, court uh, uh, isang judge na na may simpatya sa mga NPA dahil uh, pinalay nila yung isang tao na wala namang basihan yung mga NTF, LCAC, ek-ek-ek na yan. ginawa nila. So pag-usapan natin shortly yan, guys, kasi may, may implications din ito. Of course, last time, We check, you know, legally speaking, the idea of red tagging is is not crystal clear as a criminal act, diba? But nevertheless, I think the Supreme Court decision, in a way, is a right step in the right direction para itong red tagging na yan, this horrible practice of red tagging, meaning you demonize anyone with progressive thoughts as being insurrectionary and treasonous, and you securitize that, You weaponize that to shut down any kind of contrarian points of view. Yan, yan, yan. Mali po yan, mali po yan, mali po yan. So hopefully, this major decision by the Philippine Supreme Court will, you know, push things in the right direction. So pag-usapan natin yan very shortly later on. Isa pang updates, guys, yung ating minamahal na presidente. Travel, travel! Okay. O ayaw ko na sabihin Magellan Jr. kasi... Baka akong away niya. Siyempre, medyo nagtatravel-travel din tayo. Except yung Saturn, of course, you know. Uh, imbitado tayo. Kasi, kaya, ano. Yeah. <laughs> Alam niyo na, di ba? 
Anyway, pero ito, nag-speech yung ating minamahal Pangulo sa Australia. Social talagang president natin. Our president spoke before the Australian Parliament. Mites! What's up, mites? Hindi siya sa Sydney. Nasa Melbourne siya. Nasa Melbourne. Very social. Very posh. Alright? Pag-usapan din natin ang implication yan. Because guys, in many ways, this shows na ang, ang mga Western countries ay full embrace na sila kay Marcos Jr. Talagang love na love nila ito si Marcos Jr. Kaya they are welcoming him as if siya po ay isang democratic icon. ba? Diba? Mala, uh, mala ano, mala Corazon Aquino ang um, pag-welcome sa kanya. I don't know, maybe... Uh, you know, we just came from Washington, D.C. And I was hearing a lot of positive things being said about Marcus Jr. So next thing we know, baka he'll speak also before the joint session of the Congress of the United States. So, ito talaga, pagdating sa mga posh diplomacy, wala talagang talo ito si BBM. Alright? But before, before going into those issues, alright, one by one, because gusto natin pag-usapan yan, especially itong issue ng Philippine, Australia, posh diplomacy, BBM travel, importante yan, pag-usapan natin, mahalaga yan. Aside from itong uh, guilty verdict laban kay Lorraine Badoy, hindi pala Badoy, uh, Badoy, alright? Pag-usapan natin guys, itong, um, eto, eto, usapan budol, alright? So kahapon actually, we, we didn't have a chance to check the exact uh, statements, and I know actually kahapon, we kind of touched on that, but I touch on this issue more in the context of Digong kind of uh, recalibrating his position, realizing that perhaps now is not the time no, to go for all-out war. And perhaps better they wait out the storm. And who knows, maybe behind the scenes, my mga reassurances na pagdating sa ICC, no, medyo protectado siya. Or at least that's the official statement coming from BBM again just the other week. So let's look at it because I think as far as BBM is concerned, He's not feeling as much pressure from the West because as far as the West is concerned, we had uh, Attorney Carranza with us, international humanitarian law expert, who said that actually doubts whether the United States is invested in the ICC investigation because after all, the U.S. itself is not part of the ICC. And in fact, under the Trump administration, uh, you had the U.S. government taking very aggressive actions against international criminal court or international uh, humanitarian oriented courts who uh, try to question or to charge American service servicemen accused of engaging in human rights violations and war crimes, let's say in Afghanistan and Iraq. Uh, siguro ibang usapan pag Europe, ibang usapan pag Australia, itong mga bansa na ito invested sa ICC, but I, I, I don't think that's the lay of the land right now. But before that, pag-usapan natin ito si Digong, hindi tayo ko pa yung mga ibang tanas, saan na ko kayo? Pakita na kayo kasi kung hindi kayo magpakita... Uwi na lang tayo. Mag-uwi na lang. na lang tayo. O, oh, nasan na yung mga YouTubers dyan? Okay, okay. At buti pa doon mga TikTokers. Gising pa. Saan na kayo mga YouTube? Gising na kayo. Start na tayo. Okay? Let's get the ball rolling. Okay? Don't waste my time. <laughs> if alam nyo lang guys, ha? If alam nyo guys. I've given speech speeches before thousands of people. I've given speeches before before like two people. Right? May mga may isang talk ako dati. Dalawa lang, dalawa lang tao nandun. Tapos me being me, sabi ko wala akong pake. Ang gagawin ko dyan, i-video ko na lang yan and then I'm just gonna put it on my YouTube and, pro, uh, and, and platforms para magkakaroon naman ng just a few thousand views at least, di ba? So, yun ang pangbawi natin. But but don't worry, I don't do things para lang maraming mga nanonood. Pero please lang, umayos kayo mga taga-YouTube. Magpakita kayo ah. Biglang nawala kayo nung nawala yung, umiba yung time zone natin. Nung time na purong kibola yung pinag-usapan, ang dami-dami niya. Okay guys, eto, eto, eto. Puntaan natin to si tatay. Kasi, let's get a bit serious. Kasi, medyo crazy eh. I mean, if you think about it. This is, this is, this is like budul time. Okay. No, I mean, just the temerity. Grabe. I won't use the word audacity. Kasi parang it's an insult to the word eh. Hindi ito audacity eh. This is like just the temerity to, to parang, Anong point, anong sinabi ni Ronald Diamas kaapon dun sa, dun sa show ni Christian? Parang ginawa tayong show nga, parang gano'n, something like that. Di ba yung sinabi na? I mean, I kind of agree with him. I mean, look at this, guys. Ah. Ito, ito, ito. Play natin to, ah. Mga minamahal natin, mga kamets. Ito, ito, ah. Pero kung sabihin mo, adik, wala akong sinabi na gano'n. Patayin ako ni Marcos niyan. Mahawa ka naman sa akin. Matanda na ako. 
Pong Marcos bangag noon. Ngayong presidente na bangag dakten oh. ang presidente. Let's just make it sure. Ha? Same person po yan. Isang tao yan. Hindi ito dalawang tao. Same tao lang po yan. Separated by a month. Right? So, nung last days of January, ito po yung sinabi na almost exactly a month ago, same tao lang po yan. Ha? I mean, just the temerity to completely deny what he said in, in such an open open field talaga ito eh. Ulitin natin ha. My... Ito ha. So, tinanggi niya na Ininsulto Pero niya si Pangulong Duterte. Adik, wala akong sinabi na ganun. Patayin ako ni Marcos niya. Ayan, magpawa na naman sa siya. Akin. Matanda na ako. Ang Marcos, bangag noon. Ngayong presidente na bangag dakten ang presidente. May drug adik tayo na presidente. Ayan. Nung ako'y mayor. Ulitin natin na, Ulitin natin na. Bangag dakten ang presidente. Oh, May drug addict tayo na presidente. Nung ako'y mayor, pinakitaan ako ng evidence ng... Wait lang. Nang wala to. Lumabas tuloy. Alaman ni Tuli saan ko inedit to sa, ka... <laughs> sa TikTok. Wait lang ha. Nasaan yan? I mean, guys, grabe, di ba? Buong mundo pinag-usapan yan. Tapos ngayon, just poker face. Wala man lang effort. I mean, wala. Aba, wala, wala, wala akong sinabing ganun. Ha? Nag-invento kayo ng story dyan. Aba, aba, tayo pang, eto na naman. Guys, kaya nga sabi ko, ingat talaga tayo kasi magaling mag, ano eh, gaslight tong mga to eh. Sasabihin nila, tayo pang nag-invento ng story. Ulitin natin to ha. Pero kung sabihin mo, adik, wala akong sinabi na gano'n. Patayin ako ni Marcos niyan. Maawa ka naman sa akin. Matanda na ako. Kung Marcos bangag noon, ngayong presidente na bangag dakten ang presidente. May drug adik tayo na presidente. <laughs> Nung ako'y mayor, pinakitaan ako ng evidence ng PDEA. Doon sa listahan, nandoon yung pangalan mo. I mean, come on! Guys, niya. come on! Nagpalakpakan na ako! Kasi magkaibigan tayo. Kung hindi magkaibigan, magkakilala. Eh, ikaw eh. <laughs> Pumapasok kayo ng alanganin. Mr. President, baka susunod ka sa dinaanan ng tatay mo. ba diba, guys? I mean, oh, in what universe? <laughs> in what? Oh, ano na naman? Nasaan si, ano, si Harry R? Baka sasabihin naman yung Harry R. No, we took it out of context. Ganyan sila magsalita sa ganito, ganyan, ganyan, kultura. Hindi eh. Openly niya sinabi. I don't know in what universe. Hindi klaro yung sinabi niya accusation. Tignan niya the confidence na isas. Ay, wala akong sinabi ngayon ha. Wala akong sinabi ngayon. Pero kung sabihin mo, adik, wala akong sinabi. Wala, ngayon. wala. Tatayin ako ni Marcos niyan. Mahawa ka naman sa akin. Matanda na ako. Kung Marcos bangag noon, ngayong presidente na bangag dakten ang presidente. May drug addict tayo na presidente. I mean, guys. <laughs> Nung ako'y mayor. I don't know. How can we be more clear than... Pinakitaan ako ng evidence Ma. ng PDEA. Doon sa listahan, nandoon yung pangalan mo. I mean, tignan nyo. Nagpalakpakan na lang. Kasi magkaibigan tayo. Kung hindi magkaibigan, magkakilala. Eh, ikaw eh. Pumapasok kayo ng alanganin. Mr. President, baka susunod ka sa dinaanan ng tatay mo. Yung, yung, ang panalo talaga sa akin guys yung talaga nagpapalakpakan talaga yung tao eh talagang believe na believe sila I won't be surprised 
the same people now sasabihin na, Aba ka, di walang sinabi si tatay doon. Mga bias kayo, mga bias, bias. Sabihin na naman nila. Mga self-proclaim, self-proclaim analyst kayo. Ayan na naman tayo itong mga, ay nako, ay nako. Mga bias daw tayo, bias, bias. Mga self-proclaim, proclaim, self-proclaim. Ayan na naman tayo mga kameta eh. Actually, if you think about it, nakakatuwa siya. At siguro hindi lang kailangan ng drug test ngayon. Ibang test yata ang kailangan gawin natin ngayon. But uh, I'll not go there. Baka medyo ano na, mahabang usapan yan. O patest nyo na yan kung ano, kung okay pa. Anyway, um, no na no, guys. Ang akin lang. At the same time, nakakakilabot. Kasi guys, think about it. We had this person as our president for six years. Naswerte na nga tayo, medyo ano eh, pumalpak siya nung, ano niya eh, nung plano niya na ilagay si ano. Alam niya na siya gusto niya ilagay, hindi si Sarah eh. Eh kaso walang traction yung isa, sumabla yung buong strategy tuloy na nalo si BBM. Right? They ate their lunch and the lunch box together. Kaya galit si Digong. But guys, imagine mo for six years, we had to bear with someone like that. Now, talagang, hindi lang poker face ha, siya pang galit. ba diba? May sasabihin siyang mali. Or may sasabihin siyang incendiary. May sasabihin siya na totally out of this world. Or may sasabihin siya na totally hindi sang ayon dun sa atin, hindi tugma dun sa ating saligang bata, sa sobrang illegal or whatever. And then, pag pinoint out mo yan, dalawa lang sagot. Either sasabihin nila, ay, never nangyari. Oh, wala akong sinabing ganyan. And, kahit ano inyo, wala akong sinabing ganyan. Or, sasabihin nila, hindi, taken out of context, taken out of... Ayan tayo eh. Ayan tayo eh. Kaya ang point ko, it tells a lot about the quality of our democracy. Now, we allowed someone like this to get away with this style. No? Honestly, kaya nga sabi ko minsan, wala na. <laughs> Hindi ko alam if this is just part of you know, congenial, let's just say, truth shy politics facts shy politics to put it mildly or uh, this is something else i don't know probably it's both so na dismaya lang na we had this for six years and hindi lang yon ang taas pa ng approval ratings and all of that so what does that say about us as a country na okay lang tayo with a leader to just play with facts and fiction and, and mixture of fiction and reality and ganyan. I mean, harap-harapan niya sinabi, na-accuse na yung ating kasalukoy ng presidente exactly a month ago. And then ngayon, siya pa yung galit. Ay, wala ako sinabi. Aba, wala ako sinabi ganyan. Ta- aba, aba, siya pang biktima. Diba? Siya pang biktima. I, I mean, that's what I'm saying, guys. Eh. Imagine a person like this was our commander-in-chief for six years. Diba? So, either... I mean, guys, honestly, dun sa six years na yan, ano yung lasting progress na nakita natin? Honestly, lasting progress. Pagdating sa bigas, number one na naman tayo, importer of bigas. And to just blame BBM because BBM was one year, two year there, siya nga lang nag ng ganyan. You know, yung problema natin sa rice and all, matagal na yan, pero may six years si Digong. So, anong improvement ton? Yung issue sa... I mean, I can go on an education crisis natin. May six years si Digong, may two years pa yung anak niya ngayon. After eight years, kulelat na naman ang Pilipinas sa education standards. Alright? Ayan, I can go on and on about it. Look at our foreign relations. Six years. Nangako siya na ang China mag-invest ng $24 billion. Ayan, asan na? Asan na? Yung nakita ko lang investment ng China, guys, yung bridge sa may Rockwell. Na, ganito guys, ha? Ang... Ang laki ng bridge, pero two-way lang yung papasok doon. Parang, kukunti yung papasok, pag, pa, pag nandun ka na sa bridge, ang luwang na, and then papasok ka na naman doon sa, like, I mean, <laughs> my goodness, ki horror. I mean, di ba? At ang tagal-tagal yung paggawa ng bridge niyan, purong mga Chinese din yata, mga workers, contractors, parang sila lang nato kumita dyan eh. Ang traffic nung area niyan, ng tagal-tagal, tapos yun lang mayyara sa bridge niyan, na pang ginawa lang pang ano, pang uh, ano pang picture picture selfie ng tao pag uh, syempre maganda kasi Rockwell area pagdating sa uh, December and holidays diba lighting and all diba and i mean essentially dolomite populism yung dolomite beach na ginawa ni Digong 
ayun po ay yung isa itong metaphor sa kanyang style of governance. And just like the Dolomite Beach, napaka-popular yun. Hindi ko, I mean, Dolomite Beach, napaka-popular. O anong nangyari sa Dolomite ngayon? Ha? Kamusta ng Dolomite? Maka nang ginastos natin. Yung hundreds of millions of pesos na ginastos natin doon. Kung sana nilagay natin into something more scientifically evidence-based back public policy, di sana may nagawa pa tayo. Ang dami natin, eskwela, sana ginawa doon sa ginastos natin sa Dolomite Beach na yan. Right? And good luck naman doon sa mga nag-swimming dyan sa may Dolomite area. Magpa-toxicology na kayo. Lalo yung mga foreigners dyan na nakita ko nag, uh, nagpipicture-picture yung mga... Yung mga, ano yun, may mga Europeans doon na naka, ano, yung patoxicology nyo naman. Pwede naman yung toxicology kahit buhay ka pa, di ba? Hindi naman kailangan sa ano lang, forensics yan, di ba? So, yun ang sinasabi ko, dolomite populism. At yung sa issue ng droga. O, ilan ang nahuli? Kamusta si Peter? <coughs> si, ano, yung, ano, yung, <coughs> ayan. Ano, pangalanan natin, yung mga big fish talaga na, ano, na wala naman, happy naman pa rin sila, di ba? Mga nawala lang, nawala lang naman dyan yung mga small timers eh. At y- yun pa yung mga hindi inosente. Eh. Imagine ang dami mga totally walang ginawa, na damay lang sila, kinota lang sila, lakian like Los Santos. And that, the whole thing, ayan, formali pa. Totoo yan, yung mga <coughs> formali, ba't na natin pinag-usap? <coughs> Sarap. Guys, dami Lamborghini dyan sa ano ah. Ubusan ng Lamborghini, Lamborghini, Lamborghini. Yan, talaga yan. Ang sinasabi ko guys eh, napat na dolomite talaga tayo eh. Yung buong ano natin na dolomite lang talaga. Tapos yung Chinese investment, purong pogo lang pumasok. At alam natin yung pogo na yan, wala naman na puntang ano yun eh. Hindi naman magbabahit ng buwis yata yung mga iba dyan. Ibang buwisit lang yata nangyari, hindi bu- buwis eh. So, I can go on and on about it, di ba? So, please lang, don't throw me this popularity numbers. Well, guess what? Saddam Hussein had a 90% popularity. Kim Jong-un has a 99% popularity. Putin has a 86-90% popularity. So, what? Yeah, they're disasters for their country. Right? Hindi ito popularity contest. This is about competence, compassion, and, and governance. You know, modern governance. Hindi 14th century medieval tyrant, di ba? So, I can go on and on about it. Pero yun nga, nakakalungkot actually kung isipin mo. For six years, we had a person like this. Na in the in the full glory of daylight, right? May sinabi siya. And then one month later, totally i-deny niya na sinabi niya. The whole world saw it and they did deny niya without any fear of accountability, without any fear of being corrected. So, this tells you, Karen tong tao na to. Karen, di ba? Karen, or ano, ano bang Darren? Pag lalaki ba, Darren? Kasi nung sabi ko, Kevin or, or Ken. Huwag <laughs> Ken, kasi Barbie yun. Yung Kevin ang gusto ko, Kevin. Itong Karen na to, yun na ganun mga Karen eh. May mali silang ginagawa. They get away with it. Ang dami nagdi-defend sa kanila. And then sila pa yung galit when you point things out. And they have totally no sense of, wala. Bakit? Tawa yung manager. Bakit? Gaganan, di ba? Yun ang sinisabi ko guys eh. Kaya tama si Rizal eh. Walang Karen, kung walang dumi- depensa sa mga Karen. <laughs> Alright? Wal- di ba alam niyo yung quote na yan, di ba? Yung exact quote yan kay Rizal. Walang Karen sa mundo kung walang nagpapakaren. Okay? Problema sa atin, hindi lang tayo nagpapakaren sa mga Karen. Dini-defend pa natin mga Karen. Tapos yung mga Karen, may Harry pa. Yung Harry, nagdi-defend kay Karen. Tapos yung Harry, sasabihin niya, don't violate yung human rights ni ano ni Karen. No <laughs> yan, tayo pang masama. So yan si sabi ko guys. Kaya nga tayo fourth world country. Okay, hindi tayo third world, fourth world tayo. Ang third world po Vietnam. Medyo fourth world na tayo. Kasi nga ganyan ang galing natin, guys. Ganyan ang galing natin. We allow our trapos and politicos and populists and all to get away with so much. With all of this mumbo jumbo. I mean just the temerity, right? In the, I mean, buong mundo kinote yung drug suspect. Hindi lang yun, minura-mura pa and all of that. Nag-call out, call on the military pa siya and all of that. And then bigla, walk Hindi lang walk back to eh. Iba yung walk back eh. Ito talagang ano eh. Acrobatic na to eh. And totally no sense of shame or anything. So, this tells you there's something really wrong with our democracy and our political system. 
Honestly talaga guys. Honestly, there's, there's really something wrong. And yeah, yeah, correct, correct. I I didn't even go dun sa mga blasphemous na sinabi niya. Diyos ko, yung mga sinabi niya ukul sa Pope, sinabi niya sa ating... I, I mean, I I cannot, I don't want to even say it. I mean, my goodness. Blasphemous. And then may mga religious groups tayo and all of that backing him up. My goodness. Diba? Oh. <clears throat> Kamusta naman si Kibuloy? Anong, 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 anong update dyan kay Kibuloy? Oh, diba? Oh. Tapos nung tinanong siya about Kibolo and Guns, pinagtawanan na lang niya, ay, hindi, ako bigyan ko na lang ng machine gun and canyon. And then, wala na. Tapos na, na-deflect na yung topic. So, that's my problem, eh. We, we, we allow the Karens and Trapos and all to get away with things for so long na, honestly, binabastas lang tayo, eh. I mean, for them to feel so relaxed and just do it whatever way they want without any... Respect for facts, reality, na siguro kami, naalala naman namin siguro ng konti nung sinabi mo isang araw. Wala eh, totally no respect. Total no respect for our system, for our people. Ako naman guys, ito lang sasabihin ko. Naintindihan ko yung frustration natin sa political system natin. Okay? Naintindihan ko yung frustration natin sa political leadership natin. Pero sana naman, respetuin mo yung taong bayan. ba? Diba? Hindi ko ma- yun na lang at least ang gagawin mo. And, and yun ang hindi ko nakikita eh. There's no absolute respect whatsoever sa taong bayan. Because kitang-kita naman natin eh. ba diba? and, and this has been... Uh, so for me, what this latest episode of totally... Ay, wala akong sinabing drug addict. At, eh, hello? Hello? ba diba? That just tells you, you know, what we're willing to put up with. That just tells you what kind of immature system we have. That tells you what kind of problematic political culture we have. And honestly, guys, honestly, my problema talaga tayo dyan. It's, it's a value system issue. It's a political passivity issue. Hindi naman gagawin ng mga trapo and politikos yan kung hindi natin pinapayagan eh. Ulitin natin na ah, ang sinabi ni Rizal, dun sa third novel na yan, kasi yung second novel, ano, no tyrants if no slaves. Pero meron siyang da- dapat pangatlo, there are no Karens kung walang nagpapakaren. Alright? Or there's no Karen if there's no Harry to defend the Karen. Okay? Honestly, guys. Wala, bumabatuloy yung chair ko. <laughs> Kailangan natin bumili din ng bagong chair yata. Wala na, bumibigay na. Hindi, okay pa to. Bumibigay. Hindi, <laughs> yun nga yung sinasabi ko, guys. Eh. And, and and let me be absolutely clear. Just just in case. Just just in case. I hope hindi magkakaroon ng misunderstanding dito. This is not about being personal about anyone. If if you remember, I criticized every single candidate in 2022 elections, including, all right, including yes, including the opposition. I've, I I I criticized the opposition how many times? Kaya and dami mga haters and bashers natin sa Twitter, except saan sila ngayon, <laughs> diba? Um, I guess all right. My my point is, diba? My point is, I hope people understand when we make these commentaries and all. Ito ay galing talaga sa galing dito at saka galing dito pinag-iisipan natin pero galing din sa konsyensya natin galing sa mga conviction natin yan eh and kaya nga sabi ko kaya ganyan lang mga walang production level yung mga ano natin mga mga vlogs natin podcast natin kahit oh, yun yung isang camera natin luma na kailangan na natin palitan kahit ganyan na lang mga earphones earphones natin na scotch tape scotch tape alright thank god nakikita ko na appreciate na ibang tao kaya kapon I was surprised nga nagchecheck lang ako dun Uh, dun sa mga analytics ng podcast. Yung pala, yung mga grupo sa Australia, mga others, binibigyan na tayo ng, ano, ng five star and all of this. I really appreciate it. I, I, actually, I'm surprised. Dahil, means, I mean, oh nag-English naman tayo, guys. Pero hindi naman consistent English, yo. Ang description sa atin, guys, is comedy sandwich edutainment. Okay? Educational entertainment. Alright? So, I'm really touched by this. Ito by... Heads and Tails Stories, alright, via Apple Podcast Australia, alright? So, last month lang ito. Ay, hindi, February pala. Earlier this month lang pala ito. Oh, entertaining, balanced, and educated view on all things geopolitics. A worthy listen to anyone who wants in-depth analysis about the latest Philippine news. Richard Haydarin gives an alternative to the dry, traditional analysis and hyper-emotional vlogs. Yes, I mean, sometimes we get emotional and all of that, but I, I don't try to overdo it. Yes, we try to use comedies. I, I'm glad they appreciate it. I'm glad na nakikita ng ibang tao. At least, if you're not here, at least sa labas, nakikita nila, guys, itong, uh, 
how we talk about geopolitics around the world, but also about Philippine politics. And yeah, as far as possible, I don't want to be traditional about this. But let me say one thing. Hindi lang tayo hindi hyper-emotional, katulad ng ibang bloggers. But I know some are gonna hate me for saying this. But after the elections, I was the... You know how much I risk when I criticize the opposition and all of that. And you know how many, how many people turned on me for doing that. And I did that because I wanted the, I wanted us to move forward. Not to just be bitter and angry and, and uh, parang retroactive and retrogressive. And, you know, ayoko nang ganon. So I took a lot of risks by criticizing almost all sides. Almost all sides. Almost because there are mga sides that are not even worth commenting on. Diba? I mean, I'm not gonna name names, but parang wag na lang. Wag na. But we criticize all sides. And, and you know, we got bashed for that. We got attacked for that. But, you know, that never dissuaded me. So what kung nabash tayo ng mga, mga kulto, kulto na ibang tao? So, guys, I appreciate what we're doing here in this podcast because even if alam ko, halos lahat kayo in one way or another, there was a time na nainis kayo sa akin dahil nayabangan kayo or dahil hindi nyo gusto yung sinasabi natin. I'm glad because what we're doing here, guys, is not partisan analysis. Alright? Ang... I'll be honest, ang dali mag, magpalaki ng following kung partisan ka. Pumili ka lang ng isang malaking grupo and then wak, wal, wala kang ginawa kundi bigyan mo sila ng vitamins every day. Fanaticism vitamins. Right? And you can, and it can be any group. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna name names, but there are people out there who are trying to present themselves as completely objective, etc. But clearly, I never saw them really criticize one side. As in, halos wala. Until one year, two years na later on. Ha? When kami, ako, Liamas, and all of us already did the criticism and bash and got bashed for it. Alright? That's not objectivity to me. That's pa-safe. Alright? So marami dyan, ang lakas magbanat ng ibang grupo, tapos sobrang pa-safe dun sa side nila. Tayo, kinakritisize natin lahat. Alright? Life pa nga nababash tayo ng different groups eh. Alright? Nagkamali-mali pa nga ako. Oh, ito, wait lang. Ito si Oliver Bl- Block natin. Ayan. Block. Ayan. Ay, sabi ko eh, konting bastos lang, tanggal kayo dyan. Alright? Madali na mag-block ngayon eh. Live. Tik-tik. Tatapos na usapan. Ganun lang. Ganda na mga platforms ganyan guys eh. Mabilisan lang by the way yan yan. So, so that's what I'm saying guys. And, and please lang, yung mga nagsasabi sa akin na, huwag mo na pansinin yung mga na like, put yourself in my shoes, get bashed by tens of thousands of people for 6, 7, 8 years. Obviously, you guys haven't been through that and then get back to me. But you know what I'm very proud of guys is, dahil palaban tayo, dahil aggressively we guarded our spaces, in many ways guys, alam natin na safe space itong uh, platforms natin. Hindi ko pa alam ng konti dito sa mga ano. Ayan. Itong mga TikTok na yun. Oh, block na naman natin. Ay, bakit na-follow? I-block na kita. <laughs> Medyo TikTok nilinis ko pa. Pero at least, dito sa mga ibang platforms, good luck sa mga trolls dito. Diba? Good luck sa inyo. But we had to fight for that, guys. We had to fight for that. We had to fight for that. And including mga dilawan trolls, mga... Uh, kunyaring pink uh, trolls mga ganyan. we have to get rid of all of those people alright because I have no problem you criticizing me but kung nag hater ka lang dyan and you're just uh, spreading poison good luck na lang sa'yo now sp- speaking of hater spreading poison uh, spreading fallacies pag-usapan natin itong latest ruling by the Philippine Supreme Court guys so meron na tayong um, ru- ruling dito uh Labas na natin. Saan tayo napunta? Okay, ta, 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 ta. okay. Meron na po. Meron na pong ruling from the Philippine Supreme Court. So, the Supreme Court of Philippines, guys. Speaking of Supreme Court, guys. Kakapost ko lang yung Supreme Court ng United States. By the way, it, none of my pictures are endorsements of United States institutions. I'm sorry. Sobrang sabog yung politika nila doon. And hindi lang yung sa kongreso nila. Yung latest ruling nila ngayon sa US Supreme Court that they're willing to even entertain yung immunity ek- ek ni Trump. Surprise, surprise! Ang dami dyan na Supreme Court judges sa US ay mga conservatives. Ay yuma- ilan, tatlo lang, tatlo at least, I think, or apat ay appointed pa ni Trump. Diba? But anyway, um, so yun lang ha. Natuwa lang ako sa architecture. Alright? I'm a big fan of anything Greco-Roman. 
all right but not only greco-roman i love a lot of things i like i need chinese i like chinese civilization i like indian civilization i like middle eastern civilization but i also i love greco-roman so yun lang ah. but anyway speak of our own our own uh, supreme court <laughs> hindi ganun kaganda yung building nila compared to sa US Supreme Court to put it nicely. Actually, yun yung frustration ko eh. Sana yun ang nakuha natin sa mga Amerikana at saka Espanyol. At least yung gandaan natin yung mga government buildings. At least yung national government building natin, guys. Kaya tuloy, nasusunog na lang yung ganito, yung postal office na wala. Hindi natin minimaintain. Paano naman natin na-respetuhin yung ating gobyerno? Kung yung buildings pa lang yung mukhang kawawa. Di ba yung mga courts natin, kung nakapunta kayo sa mga courts natin, parang ewan ko talaga. Di ba? Kasi, eh, Wala tal- Tapos, ang ganda ng mga malls natin, air condition, yung mga ganyan, ganyan. E, kaya, sabi ko eh, sana yung nag-invest din tayo dun sa glory and glamour of our government institutions para tumakas ng respeto ng tao sa ating mga government institutions eh. I, I really felt that, for instance, when I gave a talk dun sa, uh, yung sa museo natin, uh, yung dating senado natin, I had a talk there with the uh, Philippine-Spanish, uh, Philippine-Spain uh, event yon. So, nag-talk ako about Rizal and all of that. Ang ganda nun, this is the old Philippine Senate. So, you could feel the glory, the glamour. And tignan mo yung mga senador natin nun. Diyos ko naman, napakagaling nila. I mean, medyo, let, let's be, let me be honest, <laughs> medyo confident ako sa sarili ko when it comes to, you know, speaking all of that. But my goodness, I, I can imagine, If I were there in the Philippine Senate in the 1920s and 30s, in, in fact, all the way to, I don't know, 1950s and 60s, I would, I, hindi naman intimidated, pero medyo mapaganan ako lang. Okay, alright. Diba? Okay, alright. Pero ngayon, Senado natin, parang, <laughs> mag-humor na lang tayo, mag-sandwich, uh, anong review ulit sa akin? Nang mga mga Australian group na, comedy sandwich edutainment. Okay. I'll take it as long as five star. Alright. Thank you so much. Guys, by the way, support naman kay John sa Apple Podcast. Support naman kay John. I think kailangan natin ng mga 20 above uh, 5 stars para lumabas ng konti. Yung Spotify natin, okay na. Medyo, medyo big na tayo, don't thank God. Pero yung Apple Podcast, guys, ha, please. Alright. Anyway, um, balikan natin ito. So, ito, guys. Ha. The Philippine Supreme Court has found Badoy Partosa, former spokesperson of the government's anti-insurgency task force, NTF LCAC ek ek guilty of indirect sorry guys ah, kasi okay I, I know kasi andyan pa rin yung ek ek na task force na yan eh. at uh, no offense uh, ano naman and, um, um, all due respect kay ano yung mga kaibigan natin dyan no? yes. sir Yusek uh, Yusek Malaya baka naman magalit kayo dyan alam ko love na love na yung ano na yan uh, inayos naman daw pinerge naman daw yung mga mga alam niya na pero still napa ek ek talaga ako pag mga LCAC LCAC Ek, ek. Okay, okay, ito, ito, ito. This is in relation dun sa, in the, uh, dun sa red tagging of a Manila Regional Trial Court judge. Yung isang taon pa yan, guys. So, in a 51-page ruling, uh, ito po ay page by Pagyo Boy! Lodian! Associate Justice Marvic Leonen. Yan. Lodian, Lodian. Lodian. <laughs> the best ito si G. Justice Leonen, guys. Nafollow niyo ba yung Twitter niya? Actually, check niyo yung Twitter niya. Puro mga hugot nandun. Nakakatawa yung mga hugot niya. Actually. I find, he's very smart. He's very smart, actually. He's very smart. I'm, I'm matalino. Bagyo eh, di ba? Alam mo naman. Bagyo people. Oh, ito. So, so if you read the 51 page, actually, magaling, magaling magsulat ito. Mahusay. Uh, and, you know, I think soon he's gonna be the Supreme Court Chief Justice and possibly he'll go down as one of the greatest or at least most eloquent Chief Justices in Philippine history. And as a Baguio boy, I'm proud to say that at least one of us made it there to, to the highest court of the country. But anyway, Badoy was ordered to pay a fine of 30,000. Sana naman! Diba? Okay. Nainisip ko itong 30,000 kasi diba yung, yung kaibigan natin si Atom, diba? Um, because of yung mga retagging na ginawa ni Badoy dun sa mami niya. I think kinasuan niya ng dalawang million ba or something like that. So, I don't know. I mean, let's see how things go. So, I'm paying attention dito. Hindi lang dahil Ilocano ako. Pero parang 30,000. But okay, it's not just the money, right? It's, it's, it's what, what, what it represents, no? And warned against repeating itong similar acts uh, in the future or she would be uh, facing even more severe punishment. So, ito. So, so when is itong, ek, ek, sorry. National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict, NTF-LCAC. 
Ek, ek, okay. Da, ito kasi, nung sinabi na before na yung MTC, uh, as our RTC, Regional Trial Court Manila Judge, si Marlo Magdoza Malagar, dun sa September 20, ay 2024 na pala, no? nung September 2022, inantak niya itong RTC na ito. Hair attacks came after itong judge na ito, uh, si Magdoza Malagar, dismiss yung government's proscription case that sought to declare yung Communist Party of the Philippines at saka yung NPA as a terrorist organization. So, in fairness, I understand na very invested uh, ang NTFLK. At least under the previous um, regime, uh, in, in, in terms of essentially uh, institutionalizing it in a judicial way, itong, uh, you know, uh, terrorist um, tagging for, for, for the NPA, no? Um, so in response, si Badoy called the RTC court, quote, an idiot judge who allegedly lo- was lawyering for the enemies of the state. She even made the hypothetical... Uh, 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 this is the bad part kasi. And then meron pa siyang sinabi na something like, something like, you know, hypothetical paano kong pinatay ito or something like that, guys. So, yun yung medyo crazy yung ginawa niya. So, hindi lang yung idiot-idiot na ganun, yung tatay stigong style na idiot-idiot, ganun. Hindi eh, medyo may threat eh. Um, pero kasi later on, nagbeg siya the judge for leniency because she did it out of her political beliefs daw. And the post was later deleted and denied. So I think yun yung naging, uh, I don't know, attenuating or ito yung mga medyo nag, uh, nagpalambot ng uh, response ng, uh, ng Supreme Court. So siguro kung hindi siya nag-apologize at hindi niya dinelit ito, medyo ibang usapan na yan. Or if, God forbid, something bad really happened to the judge or there were some serious threat against the judge, then siguro it would have been different, di ba? So in other post, post Badui asked why Mendoza was so well-versed about the constitution of the CPP and pay that only members know. She also mentioned human rights lawyers, sila Edra Olalia, si Maria Sol Taule, at saka si Rachel Pastores, asking if they were the ones who wrote the judge's decision. So medyo, medyo bastos, di ba? Medyo bastos. Oh, bakit? Parang alam na alam mo yan, yung mga ganyan style, di ba? For her vitriolic statements, and oh, so ito yung, ano, ito yung sinabi ng Supreme Court, Uh, sabi niya, for her vitriolic statements and outright threats against Judge uh, Magdoza Malagar and the judiciary, respondents found guilty of indirect contempt and is fined 30,000 with a warning that repeating the same or similar acts will lead to a more severe penalty. So, it is more like a shot across the bow, the bow than, you know, than a serious kind of, uh, I would say, uh, say, I mean, I think some people are expecting something more, more significant, all right? But anyway, I think in many ways, at least this sets a tone, no? Na, and in many ways, it, it also, it's a warning also dun sa mga iba in the future, yung mga, mga mala DDS style na umayos kayo dyan, daw. And you cannot just go out there and, and do whatever you want. Yun ang sabi ko eh. When you have six years of a president, quote-unquote president na ganon, ang problema is hindi lang yung presidente mo yung ganun eh. Ang dami yung mga, mga muchacha niya na nakikiduterte style or inabuso. So that's, that's what I always say. Eh. When you have, a, when you have a authoritarian populist in power, it's not only what the authoritarian populist person does. It's the permission structure. It's the normalization of horrible behavior. It's a normalization of sometimes even criminal behavior. Right? Yun yung nakakatakot. when authoritarian populist leaders win. Kasi gets ko yung argument na sinasabi, no, you, you, you need these populist leaders once in a while kasi they shock us into, you know, out of our complacency. They inject a sense of urgency into our democratic conscience. They force us to mobilize. Yung tinatawag na accelerator model, di ba? So you have like, sometimes like, you know, some supposedly smart people, you know, making that argument that we need the Trump or Duterte, blah, blah, blah. But the problem is what the people do not understand. Even if these people are not there forever, four years in the case of Trump, but who knows, he may come back. Six years in the case of they create a whole culture. They create a whole culture. And not to mention, guys, oh, someone is mentioning about 30,000 pesos na hindi daw ganun kalaki. Well, dahil siguro wala na yung SMNI at wala na siguro yung mga consultancy fee na malaki yung laki. Maka na yung consultancy fee daw ni Jay Sonza. Diyos ko. Kung si Sonza nga, ganun ng consultancy. Imagine mo kung yung iba dyan, di ba? Anyway, um... Imagine the 30,000 alleged EJ case and, you, and people were killed. 
So so to say na di kailangan lang talaga na dumaan tayo sa ganun para ngayon mas mas seryoso na natin ang democracy. Well, it's easy for you to say that. But imagine all of those people who suffered and some people suffered, you know, irrevocably. Diba? Wala na. Pinatay na yung pamilya and all of that. Doon sa drug war na kunyaring kunyaring drug war na yan. Diba? So, yun yung nakaka-frustrate dito, guys. Now, speaking of frustration, let's also talk about international issues because as the review of our podcast went, sabi nila, anything geopolitics. Ano sabi nila ulit? Okay, guys, hindi ko inaano yan, ha? Entertaining, bal- and it, uh, worthy listen to anyone who wants in-depth analysis about, ay, hindi, hindi. In, the entertaining, balance and educated view on all things geopolitics. Okay, okay. Panindigan natin itong mga reviews natin. Alright, guys. So, ito, uh, let's do this. Let's do this. Um, by the way, guys, uh, kausap ko lang kanina si Kristan kasi <laughs> na-trigger yata yung mga Bitcoin friends natin dun sa mga comments ko, diba? Kasi I, 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 I posted something about Uh, I said, when you look at Bitcoin, dahil wala siyang intrinsic value in, in, in terms of hindi siya peg sa gold, uh, and at the same time, it's not backed by so, uh, sovereign state that can raise taxes. So it it doesn't really, so it, it really needs for more people to come in for it ha- to have more value. Kaya yung mga tao na maraming may Bitcoin, alright, uh, may interest sila na bumili din kayo ng Bitcoin kasi akyat din yung value ng Bitcoin nila. Kasi the value of Bitcoin depends on how many people buy in. The more people buy into it, the more value it will have. Right? Ganun ka simple lang yan. Anyway, um, so I'm discussing with Christian probably we'll have an episode or two soon, God willing, about Bitcoins and also catch up with him on on things about opposition and all because interesting person siya. Uh, but, but before going there, Let me go to the last part kasi paninigan natin itong geopolitics na ito. So, interestingly, yung minamahal natin na Pangulo, our very hardworking president, na sobrang mabait, na hinayan lang si Digong na gawin niya kung anong gusto niya. Uh, <laughs> yay, yay, yay. Okay, nasan na yung OBS? Okay, oh, ito, ito. Ito, guys. Ah. So, may speech siya kanina sa Australian Parliament. And interestingly, alright, um, there was a little bit of drama because may mga progressive, um, may mga progressive uh, senators, including a senator from the, uh, I think, Green Party of Australia, nanglagay siya ng plaka kung saan, kung saan sinabi niya stop the human rights abuses in the Philippines habang next speech si BBM. So, yung mga conservative uh, elements or yung mga uh, administration-oriented uh, um, elements ang sinabi nila uh, disgraceful yan. But, that's the thing. <laughs> Sabi nung isa, hindi hard-working, hard-traveling press. Oy guys, hindi madali mag-travel, ha? Ako nga... Dapat nga, sanay na ako sa travel. Pero uh, aminin ko, lalo yung mga long haul travels, it takes 2-3 days to recover. Kaya kailangan mo i- i-reset yung sleeping mo. Kailangan, may, may, may siyensya yan. Okay, hindi yan madali. Tapos you have to learn how to sleep, etc. Pero, of course, sinasabi ko yan kasi naka-economy lang tayo. Alright? Habang yung iba dyan, ay medyo maganda. Posh, posh, posh. Start up travel, mga ganun. But anyway, hard traveling. No, ako, ako ganito ah. Of course, He is the president of the Philippines. So, I want there to be, at the very least, some sort of respect for the president. Because after all, he represents the Philippines, not only himself. But let's not forget, he's also a Ferdinand Marcos Jr. And Australia is supposed to be a progressive democratic country. Kumalala niyo yung first time na, um, oh, first class yung tsaka niya, of course. Tsaka mga ano, hotel niya, mga ano, diba? Tayo mga four-star lang or mga five-star na simple lang, charot. <laughs> Ayan naman tayo. Hindi, ano naman, bayad ng mga organizations na ginbita sa atin mag-speech, alright? Anyway, balikan natin to guys, ah. <laughs> Sabi nung isa sa aeroplano na siya nakatira. Guys, grabe naman, nagpapakita naman siya every other, ano ah. Every now and then, ah. Nag-warning na nga siya about Kiboloy, di ba? Natawa-tawa siya nung sabi nila. Ano sabi niya? Saan yung video na yan? Yung ano, ito, Yung tinanong sa kanya, Sir, ano masabi mo dun sa, sabi ni Kiboloy na ano-ano? Na baka maano siya. 
No, kailangan niya magtago, ganyan, ganyan. Kasi uh, ang advice niya kay Kibuloy, magpakita ka naman dyan. Yung naman, ano, diba? Tapos ang tinanong sa kanya ng mga reporters, pero sir, sabi niya, ano, sabi ni Sbosing, ano daw, threaten daw siya, ganyan, ganyan. Tapos, tumawa ka agad dito si BBM. Talaga to si BBM, oh, sir naman. Kala ko, beshi kayo naman dyan. Ito, ito, ilabas ko. May mas maganda tayong version, actually. I think Rappler had the better audio version. Pero nakakatawa pa rin yung ano niya eh. So, I'm just trying to prove in France naman, nagpapakita naman siya sa Pilipinas. <laughs> Hindi lang siya hardworking sa aeroplano. Kaya naman, masyadong mga kaya harsh sa ating presidente. I mean, to be honest, to be honest guys, mas prefer ko yung presidente na sa aeroplano kaysa yung presidente na nandito at nagkakalat. At worse na nagkakalat kung ano nang ginagawang kalukuhan or something like that. Diba? Diyos ko. Honestly, I mean, honestly, there was a part of me that sana bakante na lang yung malakan niya at some point kasi para mas magandang bansa natin kung ano na lang eh, di ba? Negative minsan yung contribution ng mga ibang politiko sa atin. Eh. Forget about positive, negative na nga. Kaya kung zero, siguro mas maganda pa sa atin. Kaya, kaya yung mga nagsabi, ah, Philippine, fastest growing, Philippine... Oh, fastest growing tayo dahil nag-ihirap tayong lahat. Dahil nag-ihirap yung mga OFWs natin na kaibigan. Dahil nag-ihirap yung mga, ayun, mga kametas natin na um, nagpapadala ng suporta sa pamilya na minamahal nila sa buhay, di ba? Kaya maganda economy natin. Eh. Honestly, dahil ba to sa gobyerno natin? I think it's in spite of our government. Kaya, honestly, must prefer ko na nasa aeroplano na lang yung presidente kaysa yung style ng isa. Ito, <laughs> Sabi niya, sino mag- gusto mag-assassinate kay Gibo? Natatawa na lang siya, oh! Ayan, guys, may proof ako na nandito rin naman siya sa Pilipinas minsan. Nagpapakita, nagpa-press conference. Ayan, may mga comment-comment siya. Yung last time naman nagwala siya, bago siya magpupunta naman sa Vietnam. Sarap buhay. Akala natin si Bato lang sarap buhay, ah, di ba? Pero sabi ko nga guys, mas maganda talaga na hard traveling kaysa nagkakalat kang presidente dito at uh, kung ano nung ginagawa mong uh, ewan, sabog. Alam mo na, di ba? Anyway, balikan natin itong speech ni, Digo, uh, ni BBM. Honestly, honestly, it was a good speech, I would say. Honestly, I would say BBM actually is a, is, is a decent speaker. Honest, some would say even more than a decent speaker. Alright? In fairness, um, And, and he emphasized some very important things, including ating maritime security cooperation, you ating strategic partnership with Australia. Uh, you know, kasi, honestly, I mean, some of you know, you know, I used to be a lot in Australia um, for many reasons, including, of course, for, for, for uh, I, I, I taught some courses here and there. Um, So my frustration for a very long time in Australia was parang hindi natin pinapansin ng isa't isa. Parang Pilipinas hindi natin pinapansin ng Australia, puro tayong Japan, puro tayong US, puro tayong China. Yung Australia naman ganun din, puro pinapansin lang nila Japan, US, Australia. Ay Japan, US, China, hindi tayo pinapansin. Misa actually mas pinapansin pa ng mga Australians. Forget about ta- Indonesia kasi talaga magkatabi sa Indonesia at grabbing kasaysayan ng Australia and Indonesia. I can go uh, we can have a whole conversation about that, but Even Vietnam, even Thailand, Singapore, lots, Malaysia. So parang number six lang tayo sa ASEAN, di ba? Uh, para sa mga Australians in terms of parang, yun ang dating sa akin. So I, I'm really, really honestly glad, just to be honest, just to be serious about this. I, I'm really glad about how far I, our bilateral relationship uh, with Australia has come uh, since BBM has become our president. And, I, and this is not an endorsement of BBM per se. This is just an acknowledgement of how much things have improved over the past two years or so. So you had, um, for the first time, a direct official visit, bilateral official visit by an Australian leader. Yes, Sir Malcolm Gladwell, Prime Minister Gladwell. Uh, I want to be clear, sir, because we follow lang naman tayo ng mga ganyan, ta- ganyan tao sa, sa Twitter. Mga yes, Prime Minister Gla- uh, Malcolm, Malcolm Gladwell. Ayan na naman tayo. Ayan na naman tayo. Turnball. Malcolm Turnball. <laughs> Yun yung writer. Oh my God. Ayun na naman tayo guys. Tito Boy Soto na naman tayo. 
Nako kaya guys, kung naging politiko, kailangan ko talaga ng ano eh. Ano, ano ulit yung pangalan ng aso niya? Okay, okay. Ah, how is your ano? Ano ulit yung ano pangalan ng ganun? Kailangan ko na may ganun. Oh. Sana naman, in the future, mayroon ng ganun. Kasi, mahirap na magtito boy sa auto tayo eh. Diba? Hindi Malcolm Gladwell, Malcolm Turnbull. In fairness to Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull. Okay, I hope hindi siya na lang ganito. Sa Twitter lang naman nagpa-follow sa atin ng mga yan eh. Um, buti na hindi tayo live sa Twitter. But anyway, Um, <laughs> no, naman tayo. No, no, no. I mean, there was visit by him, but in the context of APEC and 2015, in the context of ASEAN Summit 2017, and he did a fantastic job. He's actually one of the smartest ever persons, uh, you know, uh, who became a head of state. I mean, uh, I had short interactions with him, and there, ganda ng sagot niya. Mabilis, sharp, very smart yung guy. At medyo nagyabang pa siya, eh, you know. He talked about Tukitides or Tusidides, and sinabi na sa Oxford siya, eh. Oh, yeah, we read it in original Greek. <laughs> Medyo mayabang eh. Pero matalino yan. Talagang talino. Talaga. But, you know, I'm, I'm so glad na now we're seeing really Philippine-Australia relationships uh, going to the next level. Because the last time we had if Australia-Ausian, in fact, that was the inaugural Ausian-Australia Summit. This is 2018. This is in Sydney. Diba? Andun ako sa Sydney nun. I sorry, andun ako sa Canberra before I went to Sydney. Um... So, actually, in interview tayo ng ABC Australia. There, I am in the Australian Parliament, actually. Bumisita ako sa Canberra before I headed to Sydney for the event. And doon, actually, lang nangyari doon when I was in Australia. I was explaining bakit wala si Digong. Kasi si Digong lang wala. I can imagine, guys. Of all ASEAN leaders, ang wala lang talaga is si Digong. Nung time na yan. The last match. Or at least of all the key leaders of ASEAN. So I had to explain why did uh, uh, Digong just snob Australia. And of course, it was in the context of Digong saying all the bad things about Western countries, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, Australia is kind of a Western country. Although, duman naman siya sa New Zealand, papunta sa Peru for the APEC Summit noon, sa Lima. But, so it's a huge, it's a huge, huge uh, quantum leap talaga uh, compared noon eh. Kasi nung 2017, parang... Parang tatay na tatay jura ko dyan. Parang pagod na pagod ako dyan. O nakikita nyo guys. O diba? Tingnan mo may jura natin. Paano yung digong stress na stress tayo mag-explain. So there. Mukhang dading dading nilang zaddy. Mukhang daddy tayo. So, so you can check my that interview. I can post a link. So I was explaining the context. Why didn't digong go to the Australia ASEAN Summit? So parang weird yung situation na yan. And then the bilateral relationship was really really tested during that time. But now things are moving, moving big time in the good direction, and I'm happy about that because we wanna we wanna have a network of partners and allies in the long United States. We don't want to rely on one country or other, right? But having said that, ah, kaya lang naman, um, sana medyo, how should I put it? Outcome oriented, because parang dating nyan is all of these Western countries are going gaga over Marcos. You know, I was in Washington D.C. They'll talk about Marcos. Oh, he's such a great guy. I'm gonna like. Chill. Like, okay, I mean, he's not Duterte. I get it. He's not negative 10. But he's not like 10, right? So maybe he's like 6, 7 or whatever, right? So parang yun lang. Medyo, ano ako, pag yun nakikita mo yung mga Western leaders na, okay, I'm not, hindi, na, hindi ko na laglagin yung mga bansa na yan. But yun lang yung medyo nakakarita. Kasi for me, you know, Nothing has happened yet really big, let's be honest. No big investments have come yet. On the human rights front, we still have a lot of problems. On anti-corruption, there's still a lot of issues we have to deal with. There's still the cha-cha, by the way, which could be an insidious threat to our democracy. So please feel free to check, your, for instance, my articles on Journal of Democracy, where I talk about these things. So yes, thank God we went from negative 10 under Digong to, I don't know, 5 or 6 or 7. But it's not 10 yet. So so I think Major. Ang, ang, ang advice ko lang sa mga Western countries, curb your enthusiasm, alright? And chill lang kayo dyan. You're still dealing with the Marcos, alright? And there's still the cha-cha threat. There's still a lot of things to fix. So don't get ahead of yourself, alright? Chill lang kayo dyan, okay? But I get where they're coming from. I think they're just so happy that wala na si Duterte. But at the same time, I think they're also worried that hindi wala talaga si Duterte kasi the vice president si Duterte. So maybe this is their way of trying to cement and crystallize this positive trend. But all I'm saying here is that chill lang. Kasi it's looking weird, to be honest. Because I'll be absolutely clear about this. One reason I find this strange is because the current government in the United States is a democratic administration, which is supposed to stand for human rights and democracy. 
The current administration in Australia is a labor government, which, like the Democratic Party in the U.S., is supposed to also stand for humanities and democracy. If we were talking about Republicans or the conservative liberal Democrats in, in, in Australia, okay, gets ko niyan. Medyo ano yung mga yan, practical yan, geopolitics yung mga yan. But we're talking about supposedly left of center, center left parties, like labor, like like democratic administration. This I get it. This, a lot of this is about China, it's about ge- geopolitics and all. But chill lang kayo guys. All right, curb your enthusiasm. You when you're in Gaga all over Marcos and all of that, like chill lang kayo. We have to still see more. There's so much more that has not been done, right? I mean, tell me. There are also concerns about Maharlika Fon. There are concerns about Cha Cha, and so. Yun lang sa akin. Yun lang sa akin. But having said that, in fairness, maayos siya magsalita, hindi siya sabog, hindi siya yung sasabihin niya ng isang kakaiba, and then he deny niya, no. He's very statesman-like, he's even charming, I would say, and he did a pretty good job in his speech. So I'm glad that we have a more statesman-like president. But as, uh, what I'm saying is, giving good speech is one thing, but we want transformative change. On that note, thank you very much, mga kameta. Ito talaga, pinanindigan natin talaga. Pinanindigan natin. Ito mga reviews sa atin, hindi lang comedy, hindi lang entertainment, hindi lang pang pamilya, pang sports pa, pang geopolitics pa, pang domestic politics pa. Ayan, ayan. Para guys, alam mo, alam niyo kung ako naging presidente, tali si tatay, mas late night show ang gagawin natin every night, alright? Live stream tayo every day. You know what? Live stream natin ang Malacanang every day. Ganun ang gagawin natin. Anyway, I'm not gonna give away too much secrets or tricks. We'll keep it there. Thank you very much, guys. Marami salamat. God bless. And please continue to support us. Just, ano lang, go lang, go lang support. Because you never know where the support comes from. I mean, like, you're, you're getting reviews from all around the world. Hindi mga Philippine-based ang mga to, right? So, so please continue lang. And pasensya na kung minsan nag-English tayo ng masyado. Kasi alam niyo naman, medyo international ang competition natin dito. Um, you know, man, I was, not, I was never trying to just be the best here and there. We're trying to be among the best political podcast, period. Alright? So, kung medyo international lang dating natin, sorry na lang for that, guys. Let's call you this. But on that note, thank you very much. God bless and talk to you soon.